Good morning. Thank you for joining us for service this morning.
Thank you, choir, and thank you, praise band. I'd like to add my welcome to you also today. It's great to have you in God's house. We want to welcome those who are here and those who are joining us by Facebook Live. We're glad that you chose to worship with us today. Some announcements in the bulletin you will see. I want to call your attention to a couple in particular today. One is that our fun timers, which is our 55 and up group, are planning a trip to Cedar Kirk, our camp and conference center on Wednesday. The count right now stands at 24, but Cedar Kirk has plenty of food. So if you want to join, just go down and sign up before you leave today. Um, the trip, we're going to collect the $20 per person. If you can bring that in cash when you come on Wednesday, we'll collect it and pay just as a group when we get to Cedar Kirk. So that's Wednesday. Look for the bulletin details, if you will. One announcement that didn't make the bulletin, but you're going to hear a lot about in the next few weeks, is we are hosting the Presbytery of Tampa Bay. November 7th, which is a Thursday, we will be the host church. There will be people coming from 65 churches around the Tampa Bay area to join with us for that meeting. It's a special meeting for us because that day, Jonathan Owen, who is one of our elders, will be elected as the moderator of the Presbytery for the next calendar year. So we're excited about that. The nominating committee is also bringing the slate of commissioners for the next General Assembly meeting. And one of our own, Hadley Owen, is going to be nominated as the Young Adult Advisory Delegate for the Presbytery of Tampa Bay. So it's going to be a big day for us here. We've got about two, 250 folks coming to join us, so we need your help. The sign-up sheet downstairs on the bulletin board reflects all the different things that we're doing. Tony Permuto is our chef. We're going to be doing shepherd's pie, so we've got cooking slots on Wednesday and on Thursday itself. We have morning snack. We need parking attendance. We need folks to greet and work with registration. It takes about 25 to 30 people to host a presbytery meeting, so if you could stop down at the bulletin board in McLeod Hall, we'd love for you to sign up. That's going to be November 7th. While you're in McLeod Hall today, we hope you'll join us for lunch. You're probably smelling right now refried beans, peas, chicken and yellow rice. We've been working this morning. The Honduras Mission Team are your hosts today. So please come down and join us at the table. We do not ask for reservations, and so all of you are invited to come. We always plan for little leftovers, and we already told the middle school youth they're probably having chicken and yellow rice for dinner on Wednesday night. So come down and join us, if you will, immediately following worship. Lots of other announcements in the bulletin. Hopefully you'll take time today and register attendance on the Ritual of Friendship pad that's in the pew. But before that, I'd like you to look around and see if there are some that you've not greeted. Let's stand and introduce ourselves to one another. Good morning, Chloe. Good to see you. Good morning. 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 Good
lights on. On. God welcomes all strangers and friends. God's love is strong and it never ends. God welcomes all strangers and friends. God's love is strong and it never ends. Please be seated. Good job, way to go. Good job, guys. In the time of confession, we ask ourselves. Do we honor God only with our lips, while keeping our hearts from the Holy One? Do we deceive ourselves, thinking we are religious, rather than living faithful lives? Let us confess our sins to God, trusting in the One who seeks to make us whole. Will you pray with me? Almighty God, Today, you are gathering your children all around the world. As you bring us together as your family, we ask you to forgive us for our separate ways. Forgive us for the selfishness that causes us to unnecessarily compete with others who are also sharing and living the Christian faith. Forgive us for the petty differences that cause and keep divisions in the one body of Christ. Renew in us a true unity of purpose that we might break bread together and share life in your kingdom, serving our risen Lord and Savior, in whose name we pray. Forgive us, O oh Lord, and may we truly know all are needed to be the body of Christ in this world. In your powerful Son's name we pray. Amen. Listen and understand. The voice of the Beloved speaks to us, implanting a word of hope, a word of grace, a word of forgiveness into our hearts. We now may go forth with songs of love and hope on our lips, confident that in Christ Jesus we are forgiven. In his powerful name, amen. Today in worship, we're celebrating both sacraments. The sacrament of the Lord's Supper will be celebrated later on this World Communion Sunday, and it's our joy to join with Bud and Catherine Shin as they bring their son, Henry James, for the sacrament of baptism. Grandparents are going to join us down front, and Elder Jean Strang is going to assist. Friends, listen to God's word as it comes to us in the gospel according to Mark. They were bringing little children to Jesus so that Jesus might touch them. The disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, 
for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. And Jesus took the children in his arms and he blessed them and he laid his hands upon them. Dearly beloved, the sacrament of baptism is the word of God made visible as ordained by our Lord Jesus Christ. Baptism is to be understood as a sign of God's power and mercy, cleansing us of our sins, and as a means whereby we are identified with Christ in his death and resurrection. Furthermore, baptism represents the outpouring of the Holy Spirit into the lives of God's people. It is the sign of our engrafting into Christ and entrance into the church. The baptism of children and infants has particular significance for us, for it reminds us that this is a sacrament of grace, that long before we are conscious of God, God already loves and claims us as God's own. This is the time when we publicly declare our intention to grow in faith. When we baptize an infant, we're reminded that we are all seen as the children of God. And this journey is a lifelong journey of growing, nurturing, and completing our faith. Today, these parents will promise to bring their child up to love and serve God. You, the members of this family, family and friends here, and the whole congregation will be asked on behalf of the Church of Jesus Christ to join with this family in the Christian nurture of their child. As we stand here today, Catherine and Bud, I ask you, is Jesus Christ your Lord and your Savior? Yes. Do you trust in him? Yes. Do you intend your child to be his disciple, to obey his word, and to show his love? Let us bow before God in prayer. Most merciful and loving Father, we thank you for the church of your dear Son, for the ministry of the word and the sacraments of grace. We praise you that you've given us such gracious promises concerning our children, that in your mercy you call them to you, you mark them with this sacrament as a singular token and pledge of your love. Set apart this water now from a common to a sacred use. Grant that what we do here on earth may be confirmed in heaven. In humble faith we present you this child. We ask you to receive him, endue him with your Holy Spirit, and keep him forever as your own. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. But in Catherine, I ask you now, what is the Christian name of your child? Henry James. Henry James, Shen, child of the covenant. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May God's Spirit, if he's happy touching that water, I'm happy too. May God's Spirit dwell in you richly and keep you from this time forth. Friends, this child is now received into Christ's church. Do you, as members of the household and family of faith, undertake with these parents the Christian nurture of their child? And do you promise to live your life in such a fashion that in due time, by your example, you may strengthen his household and family ties with the household and family of God? And will you endeavor to show him such faith that he may confess his own faith? If so, will you answer, we do. I have a couple things to present to you today. One is a certificate of baptism, showing that we gathered here today and that what we did in the name of the Father, Son, and Spirit was baptize your child into the faith. The second is a cradle cross. Our church has had a tradition for over 40 years of crafting cradle crosses and of presenting them to children. For many years, the junior highs in our church made them. Then for a time, a craftsman in the church made them. For the last several years, what we've done is we've asked our mission team in Honduras to shop for these cradle crosses that are made down there. You'll see that the cross spells out Jesus. So the last Honduras mission team brought these back, and they have them ready to present. So someday, when Henry asks, what is that cross? We hope you'll tell him the story of all of us together, family and friends in the faith, who said we're going to do all that we can so he will know our Lord and Savior Jesus. Yes, Henry, your dad's going to hold that because you're not going to have a weapon. <laughs> and now, friends, it is an honor and pleasure to present to you the newest member of the Church of Jesus Christ. This is Henry James Shin. He is a child of the covenant. He is one beloved by God. He is one who has come into the family of faith. Look at all these people. Some of them are your size. Well, 
Henry is studying you today, and that's exactly what you agreed to. Henry may visit grandparents from time to time, and when he does, we hope that he'll spend some time watching your faith. As Henry's around these dear family members and friends who have come to be with him, he will study what you do. And all you have to do to live up to your baptismal promise is live your life in such a manner that you know that little people are watching and they're going to imitate what you do in faith. Henry, you know some of these folks. All of us join you as the household and the family of God. And we thank you for reminding us that unless we receive the kingdom like a little child, We'll never enter it. Thank you for bringing us together today. And you probably know these people best. Thank you all so much. You may be seated. Thank you, Jean. How about we have a time with younger disciples? Let me ask any of the other young people who may not be down front already to join us down front, if you will, for our time with younger disciples. How many of you know what a GPS is? Some of you know what a GPS is. If you're going to go on a trip, mom or dad or grandparents may program the destination in, and that GPS will talk to you and tell you where you're going, right? Do you know what a paper map is? Before we had GPSs, this is how we got around. Now this is a map of a place called Winter Haven. Have you ever heard of it? You've heard of it, good. Well this map of Winter Haven tells us all kinds of places and if you look at Winter Haven from the air, this is Lake Howard. And right here off of Lake Howard is 6th Street. And so this map shows us how to get to First Presbyterian Church, Winter Haven. Now, how many of you here live in Winter Haven? Okay, some of us do. When we flip it over, this is also a map of Polk County. So, if you live in Auburndale, you're on the map. If you live in Lakeland, you're on the map. You were. You learned about Florida at school? Yeah. Great segue. <laughs> Guess what? I have a map of Florida. Yeah. So that is a map of Florida, except for the panhandle. We put it down here. That looks like Florida, doesn't it? And if I look on this map, guess what I find? Right here in the middle of the map is Winter Haven. But on this map, I can also see Tampa over here. I can also see a place called Cedar Kirk, if I know where it is, in Alathia, in Lithia. And I can see the Bethel Farm Worker Ministry. That's Florida. I have another map. Do you know what this one is? That's the United States. That's America, that's right. And can one of you point to Florida on there for me? Good. You can point to Florida? Yay. But this also has lots of other places. Winston wasn't born in Florida, was he? He was born in Colorado. 
Daddy, can you point to Colorado? Because if we wait for Winston to point to Colorado, we'll be here a while. Perfect. Oh, he got it. So, this helps us to talk about not just Florida, but this great big country that we live in. I have another map. What's that? That's a world map. And so, can anybody find Florida on the world map? Good job. It is so convenient that Florida sticks out in the middle of the water, isn't it? See, I was born in Illinois, and if you tried to find Illinois on this map, you'd have to look a little while. Well, this helps us to think about not just people here, but people all over on the other side of the world. I have one last map I want to show you today. This map means something to some of us here. This is a map of Honduras. Now the lunch that we're having today is made by the folks in our church who have traveled to Honduras. And the people who have been to Honduras before will recognize the word Tegucigalpa which is the capital of Honduras, and then all these towns within about a two-hour drive of Tegucigalpa. You did? Did you stay in a, a travel or a motorhome or a tent? In a camper. Okay, that's a good way to camp, isn't it? Well, Papa Tom has been to Honduras. He was on our mission team down there. In fact, lots of folks here in the church have gone on this trip. Now, this is just one place on this map here. We also have some folks in our church who have been in mission in Africa. And we have people in our church who have been in mission in Asia, in Southeast Asia. And we have people in our church that have been in mission in Central America and South America. Today's a day called World Communion Sunday. And see this map? Today... There are churches all over this map that are doing just what we do. They're coming to the table and they're celebrating a meal together called communion of the Lord's Supper. And they're reminding us that no matter where we are on this map, we belong to God. It's a real special day today. Now, I know some of you have globes at home. And I hope you always look at that globe and think, do you have a globe? Oh, that's so neat. Globes are wonderful. And globes help us think about the whole world. You have a globe in your garage that's really old. How many of you have a globe? Several of us. How many of you have a map of the world? How many of you have a computer where you can look all this up? Yay, Halloween is coming, that's true. Okay, we're going to wrap this up. <laughs> what I want you to think about today is this great big world that we live in and how much God loves every person in this world. Now, I love to get my maps out. Yeah. And so someday we'll look a little more detail at the maps at different places. That's just my backup map of the United States, just in case this one failed. Yeah, but it didn't. It did fine. So I'll put that one up here. Well, let's fold our hands today. Let's bow our heads and let's thank God for this world in which we live. God, we thank you that we come from places around, but we can think about your children all around the world. We thank you for our home and we thank you that no matter where we find ourselves, your children are there too. God, we thank you for the people who love you and claim you and follow our Lord Jesus. And we thank you that we are brought together with them, especially on this World Communion Sunday. As we come to the table later, help us think about people around the world also coming to your table as family. We thank you for this time together, for this special day for us. We ask you to bless us now in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you all for coming today, and thanks for coming down to help me with the maps.
as church people around the world gather for worship today, the currencies of their countries will fill their offering plates. There will be euros and yen, limpira and pesos, dinars and dollars, rubles and rupees as people present their gifts. Let us continue our worship as we now present God's tithe and our offerings.
Let us pray. O oh Lord, you are one, and Christians around the world are one in Christ, though we worship in different styles and belong to different denominations. The offerings your people give this day are of different denominations, but they will be used to prosper the work of your kingdom and to build up Christ's church. Though the color of our skin is different from many others, our hands will be used for the purposes of praising and serving you. Bless our gifts of substance and self together so that you are glorified. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. We continue in a season of prayer as we offer our prayers as a people. Creator God, for those of us who were nurtured in the church from childhood, we grew up singing Jesus Loves the Little Children, all the children of the world, red and yellow, black and white, we are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. That song acknowledged that there are differences among the people who inhabit this big, wide, and wonderful world in which we live. That song taught us that Jesus loves us all regardless of the color of our skin and regardless of the country we call home. That song affirmed that Jesus' love is so great that it is extended to all people. We are grateful that people of all nationalities, races, and tongues have come to know you, and we ask you to help us to be faithful in sharing the good news of Jesus Christ with others so that they too may know how they are children whom you love. God of grace and God of glory, we praise you for the beauty and wonder of this world. The sun and moon whose light shines on us also shines on people in the southern hemisphere and on people on the other side of the world. There are flowers, plants, and trees that grow only in certain locations and others that can be found in many different countries. As it is with flowers, plants, and trees, so it is with the species of the animal kingdom. We thank you for the great variety in vegetation in, in all creatures, great and small. We thank you for lofty mountains, for great canyons, for towering waterfalls, for desert plains, for vast oceans, for dense forests, for mighty rivers, and for miles and miles of rich farmland. We are constantly amazed by what we experience and discover in nature. O oh, blessed Redeemer, we have seen the power of forgiveness this week as a brother of a man killed Embrace the woman convicted as the shooter in this terrible tragedy. He forgave her, believing that this is what his brother would want him to do. The judge also showed compassion for the convicted felon, giving her a Bible to comfort her and give her strength while incarcerated. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us to forgive and showing us how to do so. Lord of our worship and Lord of our lives, all of us cannot go to places like Brazil, Ghana, Honduras, Kenya, Taiwan, Tanzania, and Thailand. We are grateful for our mission partners like Ruth Brown, Sharon Bryant, Noel Davis, Dory Halmerson, Dr. Moreno, John McCall, and Reverend Dr. Fred Foy and Dr. Cecily Strang who labor in those places. We ask your blessings upon their ministries and upon your children, whom they serve as our ambassadors of our love. Keep us mindful that all of us are called to be evangelists, and we can share the good news of Jesus Christ wherever we are. Keep us mindful, too, that we are called to be missionaries who can show the love and compassion of Christ to our needy neighbors. Almighty God, as our focus this day is global, so we pray for our military forces at bases, camps, and forts stationed in foreign lands and on international seas. Hear our prayers for Zach Anaya, Brendan Anderson, Christian Anderson, Samuel Crockett, Zach Drum, Roger Ferguson, Stephanie Gilley, Eddie Gray, Daniel Harp, Sean Harp, David Knowles, John Moradi, Matthew Massam, Caitlin Moradi Pitts, Ashton Pitts, Shad Skinner, 
and Drew Staper. Protect and shield them and grant that they may soon return home safely. Holy Comforter, hear our prayers for those who mourn. O great physician, we lift up to you those whose health has failed, those who are confined to their homes or healthcare facilities, those who are recovering from injuries or surgery, those who are undergoing tests, therapies, or treatments. Comfort and strengthen them. We remember too those who are under hospice care. Draw near to them, bestow upon them comfort, strength, and peace. King of the universe, we lament the turmoil our nation is experiencing. We regret that there is so much discord between our elected leaders. We know that our country is not alone in experiencing internal conflicts. We do pray for our leaders, asking you to give them wisdom so that the decisions they make are in accord with your will. Remind the world's leaders that they are not to be just concerned about their own people and problems, but with the global population, so that they work for peace and justice for all people. All these prayers and the silent ones of our hearts we offer in Jesus' name, and together we pray as he taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, our scripture lesson for today comes to us in the Acts of the Apostles. I invite you to turn in the Bible that you brought from home or the Bible that you'll find in the pew as we listen to God's Word in Acts chapter 1. I'll be reading from the New Revised Standard Version, beginning with verse 6. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it's not for you to know the times or the periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When Jesus had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. How many folks here have ever visited Gethsemane? I know a few have. The Mount of Olives, the Kidron Valley, Bethany, Bethlehem, Emmaus. Some of you have. Those are the places that we may have heard about if we've read the Gospels or if we look in the map in the back of most Bibles and look at Jerusalem and its suburbs. Those are also places we may never have heard about if the disciples had stayed in Jerusalem, or if they had simply gone back to Galilee after the death and the resurrection of Jesus. When we read the story of the Acts of the Apostles, we start with a group of Galileans, the disciples. They had traveled with their Lord Jesus to the holy city known as Jerusalem. In Jerusalem, Jesus was crowned king with a crown of thorns. In Jerusalem, Jesus, God in human flesh, was lifted high on a cross. Crucified, dead, and buried is how we say it in the Apostles' Creed. And yet on the third day, just as Jesus had predicted, he was raised from the dead. Proof right there that he was indeed the Messiah, that he was God in human flesh. Where we pick up the story that I just read for you from the Bible today, Jesus was about to go back to heaven to take his seat at the right hand of God. Jesus had come to earth, and here on earth he had called people by name. We've already in the past month, as we've talked about the church, mentioned some of those. Peter and Andrew, James, John, Mary. He called people by name. They walked with him, they believed in him, and their lives were changed. And their mission and ministry was outlined for them. See, right after the cross and the empty tomb. These people from Galilee found themselves in an upper room, huddled for fear of the Jews, we're told. Right there in the city of Jerusalem, they were hiding. Outside their doors, 
on the Mount of Olives in the Kedron Valley. In Bethlehem and Bethlehem and Emmaus, there were people to needed to hear what God was doing for us in Jesus Christ. These new places to them weren't that much different than the places they had left, the place of their childhood. Nazareth, Capernaum, Cana, Magdala. They may have sounded foreign to us, but these were all places that they knew. Places filled with people whom God loved. Places filled with people who needed the loving grace of Jesus Christ. Places filled with people that were anxious to hear what God was doing in the world. Places filled with people that they knew. After the death and resurrection of Jesus, these frightened followers weren't supposed to, though, huddle in some upper room. Then we pick up Acts chapter 1. They had come together waiting for Jesus. The resurrected Jesus saw them and they said, Lord, is this the time when you restore the kingdom to Israel? He told them times and seasons aren't for predicting. That's what God has already fixed in God's mind. But he said, I want you to stay together for a little longer. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Here in chapter 1 of Acts, Jesus told his disciples that their work started right where they found themselves that day. You've probably heard it say, bloom where you're planted. Well, Jesus said, be my witnesses in Jerusalem. In chapter 2 of Acts, we see that very thing happen. They are together and the Holy Spirit comes upon them. And if you remember, there are people gathered outside the doors there from all over the world. They have come from places to Jerusalem for a festival. And when the disciples are filled with the Holy Spirit miraculously, they start proclaiming the good news of what God has done for us. And out of those Galilean mouths, people from all over the world heard in their native tongue the proclamation. That day, we're told, 3,000 people joined the disciples as the Church of Jesus Christ. Well, if you can imagine going from a group of 12 to then about 120, and then in one day going to 3,000, things were going pretty well in Jerusalem. They might have said, we found what we're looking for, we're going to stay right here. But Jesus said more. He said, you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea. That's the region of Palestine in which Jerusalem is located. And Samaria, that's the region in Palestine that is north of Judea. That's where Samaritans lived, their age-old rivals in the faith. And in just in case the maps in their minds were actually pretty small, they were to take the good news to the ends of the earth. You see, on that day that Jesus spoke to them in Jerusalem, there were already people back in Nazareth and Nain and Capernaum who needed to know what they discovered in Jerusalem. There was a message that needed to get out to the world. Thank the Lord that message did spread throughout Galilee and Judea. Then it made its way to Rome and to Corinth, to Philippi, to Ephesus. And we have evidence that message continued to spread. Many generations after these disciples started sharing it, there were some people in Auburndale, Florida, who heard the good news. The year was 1884. Well, those people started a church there, and two years later, when there were people here in Winter Haven, Winter Haven was about 100 people, we're told, in 1886. Ten of them decided they wanted to form a church, a Presbyterian church. And they reached out to the Presbyterian Church in Auburndale, and they said, we'd be glad to be partners with you in sharing the good news. What the disciples gathered in Jerusalem could scarcely have imagined that day that Jesus told them to be his witnesses to the end of the earth came true in Auburndale, Florida, in Winter Haven, Florida, and in Eagle Lake, and Lake Alfred, and Lakeland, and Bartow, and Lake Wales, and Waverly, and Haines City, and Davenport, and Dundee, and Poinciana. Because of what the Church of Jesus Christ did in those early days, God's love actually spread around the world. 
you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And if you read between the lines, it says, right here at 637 6th Street Northwest in Winter Haven, you will be my witnesses. We witness to Christ as we worship God Almighty. We witness to Christ as we study God's word. We witness to Christ every time we are together in this place for Christian education, worship, nurture, fellowship. Right here we witness to Christ. It's Saturday Night Live. We witness to Christ in this building every day when we make bag lunches and hand out bag lunches. Our mission field extends beyond 637 6th Street to 711 6th Street Northwest. That's two buildings from here. That's the building that we call the Golden Student Center. Tonight, high schoolers will gather. Wednesday night, middle schoolers will gather. Dozens of young people every week gather in that place for food, for faith, for fellowship, for fun. They witness to the love of Jesus Christ. Then there's 737 down on the corner, the old transmission shop. Every Saturday, that is a place where we witness as we serve a hot meal to around a hundred of our hungry neighbors. Week after week after week. You see, the call to be Christ church, witness in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, is still coming true in Winter Haven and Auburndale and all over Polk County. And it does happen on the map and in reality at Cedar Kirk, where our fun timers are heading this week, and at the Bethel Farm Worker Ministry south of Tampa. Because of the example of those early followers of Jesus, the early church, we can't limit our witnessing to our neighborhood, our city, our state, our nation. We understand that the mission field includes places on the map like Tegucigalpa and Nakaomi and Condelaria and Agalteca and El Sute, Honduras. Our mission field includes Africa and Asia and South and Central America. The Church of Jesus Christ was never intended to stay in Jerusalem, even though that is where the disciples found themselves as their Lord and Savior was raised from the dead. Yeah, the church was meant to start there and touch lives there and then to reach out to the ends of the earth. For many decades now, the first Sunday in October has been called Worldwide Communion Sunday. We realize not every church comes to the table today, but this is the Sunday above all Sundays where people have pledged around the world to come to the table for communion and to pray for one another as the body of Christ, the church. We are so excited that we are able to do that. Here at our table, we often have different communion vessels. Today, you will find two chalices that come from Scotland. And the story of those chalices is recorded in our office and told often. They're not only from a faraway place, they're from a faraway time. 1777 is the date inscribed on these chalices. We have communion vessels here from the World Shop at Montreat, up in North Carolina, but also representing craftspeople around the world. The communion vessel that is usually out here at our middle service is from Honduras. So even when we come to this table where there are Honduran baskets, we realize that Christ's people around the world are represented. You see, this is the day where followers in the Middle East, where Jesus was born, and followers in the Midwest, where I first went to church and was told about God, and followers, wherever we find ourselves in the midst of mission and ministry, all celebrate the goodness of the body of Christ at the Lord's table. There was a message that started in Jerusalem it's echoed around the globe, and we praise God that it truly reaches the ends of the earth. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
I'd like to call our servers to come forward at this time and take their places down front. As an invitation to Christ's table, I will tell you, this is not a table of First Presbyterian Church of Winter Haven. This is the Lord's table, and it truly extends around the world. This table is a place of welcome. It is an opportunity for us to experience God's grace and presence. You are invited to this table for one reason only, that you know God and are loved by God as God's child. So I invite you today to come to this table, to taste the goodness of God, and to realize that when we come to this table, we celebrate being a part of a family that reaches around the globe. Join us now as we and two billion Christians come to the table together. Here and now. Here and Hear now, hear now, yes. hear now the words of our Lord Jesus Christ as he instituted this holy supper. On the night of his arrest, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and after giving thanks to God, he broke it and gave it to his disciples. In the same manner, after the supper, our Lord Jesus Christ took the cup and said, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood. Whenever you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you do proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us pray. Most gracious and loving God, we thank you for inviting us to this table, and especially this day as we are joined with Christians around the world who come to this holy table. By accepting your invitation to this table, O Lord, you make us time travelers. We travel back in time to remember that time when you gathered in an upper room with your disciples and shared this meal and instituted it to be observed frequently. We also reminded of the messianic banquet which is to come. And we thank you for the foretaste this supper gives us of that holy meal in the kingdom of heaven. And now at this present moment, we come to this table to feast of this spiritual food that we might be strengthened for our mission and our service. And so, O oh Lord, we ask you to set apart these common gifts of bread and juice. Set them apart to, from a common use to a holy and sacred use that we might be strengthened to be your faithful and obedient disciples, to proclaim your love in word and deed, until all people, everyone bows and everyone confesses that you are Lord. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. We are celebrating by intention today. The center section is invited to come, starting at the front and moving to the back forward. Please come this side and through and back to your seat. In this center section, we do have one basket with regular elements and then a smaller basket at the center section with gluten-free bread. So if you need gluten-free and you're anywhere on the main floor, please come to this table. At the stations at the back, you will find also the elements of bread and cup. You're invited to take a piece of bread, dip it in the cup, and partake. If you would like to celebrate the sacrament but do not wish to come to one of the stations, after we've served at the different stations, we will move through the sanctuary and we will look for you. Simply signal the elder team, the minister team, and we will come. We are celebrating today at four stations. The North Station, the South Station, the East Station, the West Station off the balcony. Remember, we are coming as people are coming around the world to Christ's table. I invite you now. Please stand.
the gifts, gifts of God for the people of God. Serve God's people with joy.
Let us pray. Blessed Lord Jesus Christ, in you there is no east or west, in you no south or north, but around the world today your people are one in you as we have celebrated the sacrament of your Holy Supper. We cherish this foretaste of the Messianic banquet and we are grateful to come to your table today to taste and see knowing that you are good and to be strengthened for your service as we continue on our pilgrimage of faith. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Amen. Let us now conclude our worship as we stand and sing our final hymn, number 526, Let Us Talents and Tongues Employ. downstairs those of you who can stay for our luncheon when you get to there just find a table once your table is filled we're going to invite you to send somebody from your table to the kitchen and they will bring all the things for family style serving at your table realizing that it may take me a little while to get there let's pause now for the table blessing so that what you eat will be ready for you let's bow before God bless God the hands that have prepared today's meal and those of us who will be able to participate as we are at this table, at that table, at all tables, help us to sense the fact that Christ is risen, that he does give us good news, and that we are nourished for the journey ahead as his disciples. Bless food, bless us, bless our lives, we ask in Christ's name. Amen. If you read the last verse to the hymn, this is our charge. Jesus calls us in and sends us out bearing fruit in a world of doubt gives us love to tell and bread to share, God Emmanuel, everywhere. You have heard the news. The mission field is outside the door. Everywhere you find yourself, share the good news of what God has done for you in Jesus Christ and be greeted with joy by all of other disciples of Christ. And as you go, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
dusty roads into paradise All of my dirt, all of my shame Drown in the streams that have made me born again Like a tide, it is rising up deep inside a current That moves and makes me come alive Living water that brings the dead to life Let's go down. We're going down.